I'm Steve Gladys here at the George Mason Enterprise Center, George Mason University, uh, for Steve Gladys Leadership Partners. And we're talking about innovative leadership solving the innovation equation. And we said earlier on uh, in the introduction that the equation was I equals T plus E plus P. And I promised, I gave you the I, which is innovation. And I promised that I'd fill in the chart as we went along. So let's talk about T. T is talent. All the research will tell you that you need to have very specific um, requirements for talent. Um, and so let me talk about that. I mean, you need people. To, you need to always start with people. Um, and, and, and as far as people goes, what you, what you don't want are people who think just like you. Um, what, what, what that creates is what I would call a talent echo. In other words, you're in a room, and everybody in the room thinks like you do, and you say, you guys like this, and you, and, and you get back this chorus of, sure, it's wonderful, because they think like you. So the first thing you want to think about is cognitive diversity. Cognitive diversity. And what we mean by cognitive diversity is, and it's fine to have all sorts of diversity, racial diversity, religious diversity, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but when we talk about diversity here, we're talking really about cognitive diversity. And cognitive diversity is really about having people who think differently, or as Steve uh, Jobs said, think different. A little grammatical error there, but you know, he had got the right point for us. I mean, who's going to argue with a guy that made that much money? Anyway, um, gra uh, the, uh, grammar aside, cognitive diversity is really all about thinking differently. And, and if you want to get a sense of what this is like, it's, it's like having a bunch of accountants in a room and a, and a bunch of strategic planners in a room. They're very different kinds of cats and they come at the same problem very different, differently. The strategy people um, are going to think real big picture, they're going to think long term, they're going to think uh, 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 very, a little bit more theoretically. The accountants are going to be much more in the weeds, much more here and now, much more give me, the, give me the facts, give me the numbers. The fact of the matter is in any operation you're going to need both of those people both of those kind of cognitive minds around. And there are plenty of instruments that can tell you a little bit about the way people think. Myers-Briggs is one of them. Uh, DISC is another one of them. There's plenty of those around. And we would really suggest you, take two, you have people in your employee <clears throat> take at least two or three of these to kind of know where they come up. Uh, but this idea of cognitive diversity and not having an echo chamber, very important if you, want a, if you really want a creative mix. The second thing you, want, you need is engagement. The only way you're going to get innovation is to have a, a fully engaged uh, group of employees. And the way you get people engaged, one of the ways you get them engaged, is to, is to find out what they're really good at. Um, whenever you talk to people and say, what's the best day you've had in the last couple of few months? And they write down what that day was. Invariably, what they were doing on that day was something they're really good at. And one of the ways to find a high engagement is to take an instrument uh, called a Clifton Strengths Finders, which you find online for like 10 bucks. Everybody in the company should be taking this one. It lists your five top, your five top uh, uh, characteristics, or if you will, talents that can be developed into into um, into uh, strengths over time. Um, we suggest everybody takes that. And and then there's also another instrument where you can, where you can actually wrap those into four areas for teams. Um, but the, the whole idea there is, is that you want people engaged, and people get engaged when they, first of all, know what their talents are, they can develop in the strengths, they know what those strengths are, and then they're used in those strengths areas. Invariably, when people are using their strengths, they like what they're doing. When they are not using their strengths, they don't like what they're doing, they tend not to be innovative or, or creative at all. The third area uh, is, a is an area called mindset. And there's a lot of research on mindset, and I can't even touch the top of it here, but, but understand that people who have a relatively fixed mindset uh, about things have to be perfect before it, that they can go forward, that really have more difficulty with creativity and innovation than people who have a more, a more open mindset, a more growth mindset. Um, there are, there, again, there's, there's actually been a lot of research, current research now, about how, how mindset can actually affect um, your stress level and how you use it. Um, so the way people think, whether it's fixed or growth mindset, um, whether, whether they're engaged by using them on the strengths area, or, and whether or not you have, cognitive, you have a, a cognitive diversity, that frames this talent area for you. With, without these, 
not these three elements, and there are, there's, again, more complexity to it than just this, but if, if you have these three areas covered, you pretty much have a great start for innovation in your company, but you have to have, you have, to have talent first. Stick with us, and we'll, we'll tell you what E&P means in just a moment. Thanks very much. I'm Steve Gladys here at the George Mason uh, Enterprise Center.